Hey, it's Boo Bird. In 2020, I took module one of the diploma in the distilling and I'll link that video above. This year, I took the second module in the diploma in distilling. So in this video, I'll go over all the distilling qualifications you can get with the International Brewing and Distilling Institute or IBD, what the module two distilling exam covers, how I studied for it and what my result was for that exam. So let's go. The IBD stands for the Institute of Brewing and Distilling, and it delivers a program of professional qualifications for the beverage industries that are recognized globally. The IBD offers a range of examinations and qualifications in brewing, distilling, malting, and packaging. At the end of this video, I'll also be giving you a bonus resource for studying for the IBD distilling modules, so don't miss that. So on the distilling side, you could do the foundation in distilling, which is meant for people who work in HR, finance, or sales, anyone who's not involved in the technical aspect of distilling. One step up is the general certificate in distilling, and this is meant for people working on the production side of a distillery. And it's generally recommended that you start with the general certificate in distilling prior to starting your diploma in distilling, although that's not required. The diploma in distilling, which I'm going for, is a qualification suited for a distillery manager in a larger distillery or head distiller of a smaller independent distillery. If you earn your diploma in distilling, you can move on and pursue the master distilling qualification, which requires you to work at a distillery and find someone there who will act as your sponsoring mentor. This qualification is split into five modules and you'll also have to come up with a practical project to do at the distillery you're working at. Very few people pursue this qualification and you can see the number of candidates were in the single digits from 2017 to 2019. So let's focus on the diploma in distilling. In this qualification, you'll focus in on in-depth distilling science, which covers all aspects of the production process. In order to earn this qualification, you'll have to pass three separate modules, which you can take in any order. Module one is about raw ingredients, mashing and fermentation, whereas module two is about distillation and the different types of stills. Module 3 is about the engineering aspect of distilling and is about gaining a deeper understanding of the importance of heat transfer, fluid dynamics, and the gas laws in distilling. Again, looking at past exam statistics, Module 2 has the highest average pass rate from 2017 to 2019, with Module 3 having the lowest average pass rate. Many people consider Module 3 to be the most dry and math heavy of the modules. The exams are held once a year on different days in June. For each exam, there's a short answer section usually with around 30 questions worth 40 points. And then there are six long answer questions and you need to pick four of those to answer. This essay section is worth 80 points, so the exam is out of 120 points. You have three hours to write the exam. I remember having 10 to 15 minutes to just look over the exam and all the questions prior to writing it, so actually I think the real exam time is 3 hours and 15 minutes. To achieve a passing grade on an exam, you need 45%. Again, that's 45% to pass. And in fact, if you earn 75% or more, that's an A grade. Module 2 is composed of seven units, which are distillation theory, batch distillation, continuous distillation, non-matured spirits, maturation, pre-package, and quality. In the first unit, distillation theory, we go over all the different ways water is used in a distillery. We also talk about different kinds of washes such as agave, molasses, and grain washes and how these different types of washes affect the distillation process and the final distillate. There's a lot of new terminology introduced in this section, 
such as azeotropes, partial pressures, uh, mole fractions, and component volatilities in a mixture. You'll learn about vapor liquid equilibrium plots and be asked to answer questions relating to the McCabe Thiel diagram to determine the number of plates necessary in a rectification column. You'll also learn about the different types of condensers, the parts of a pot and column still, as well as the importance of copper. Exam-wise, historically the McCabe-Thiel diagram has always shown up in previous exam papers, uh, but in my year it did not show up. The importance of copper is also a topic that frequently comes up in the exams. In the second unit, batch distillation, we go over different variables such as the shape of the still, the cut points, the ethanol concentration of the wash that's going into the still, and the duration of the still operation. An example of an exam question for this section would be, if I change the orientation of the line arm so it's tilted upwards rather than downwards, how will that change the flavor profile of my distillate? Another question could be, if I take a tails cut later on in the distillation, how will that affect the congener profile of the distillate? So it's basically, if I change variable X, how will that change the congener profile of the distillate? So there's as many potential questions here as there are variables in the distillation process. In the third unit, continuous distillation, we go over different continuous still designs from single column to multi-column systems, as well as different plate designs. We go over how these stills operate, reflux, the types of congeners and how fusel oil is recovered and how ethanol is recycled. Make sure you understand how all the different processes work. I've only done batch distillation before, so I found it more difficult to understand all the processes involved in continuous distillation. Unit four, non-matured spirits. This is my favorite unit because we talk about vodka, gin, and anise flavored spirits. For vodka, we go over the standards for a neutral spirit and different ways of charcoal filtration. For gin, we go over the different botanicals and what flavors they impart and the normal procedure for a gin distillation. Overall, this is a very easy unit with a lot of examinable questions, such as the different quality standards for vodka in different countries, ways of using charcoal, and describing important gin botanicals and what they contribute to a gin recipe. Unit 5, Maturation, goes over the characteristics of new and matured spirit and what the desirable maturation attributes are. We go over all the factors involved in maturation such as the cask type, the strength of the spirit going into the cask, storage conditions, and the effect of oxygen. We learn about the properties of oak wood and the different characteristics between American and European oak. We go over how casts are made, different cast types, and cast fillings. Also a very fun unit. I think there's a lot of obvious exam questions here, such as describing how different variables will change the maturation of a spirit, and also comparing different oak wood types, and also comparing different cast types. Unit 6 Prepackage. In this section, we go over blending spirits and how to manage stock levels to ensure a consistent blend, haze and haze prevention, as well as filtration. In terms of filtration, we go over how the plate and frame filter compares to the cartridge filter, and how each filtration device is designed and how they operate. Unit 7, Quality. We go over quality control principles and practices, international standards, food safety, and hazard analysis critical control points. We go over basic laboratory and sensory analysis procedures as well as hygiene. So we look at cleaning in place principles and the design and operation of different CIP systems as well as sanitizing and detergents used during cleaning. It's highly likely there will be an essay question about cleaning with CIP systems and the different cleaning agents, so be ready to answer that. This exam has seven units, 
So I allotted three days to quickly skim over all the information in each unit. Then I spent a week and a half on each unit, just making notes on it, uh, answering all the questions and the mini quizzes in each unit. After that, I spent three weeks going over things I didn't quite understand, uh, memorizing the charts and the diagrams that I thought were important. And the last four weeks, I just tried to familiarize myself with the exam. So I sat down and I did practice exams and then I just continued my revision. So in total, this took about five months. Um, and the IBD recommends that you actually study 122 hours for each module. Now the interesting thing about the 2021 exam was that it was the first year they held the exam online. In 2020, the exam was in person. Exam candidates took the exam from all over the world. And so the completed exams were mailed to the graders. Unfortunately, some of the exams were lost in transit and never recovered. So that's why the IBD decided to make the exams online in 2021. I think this was a good change and I think it did make the exams easier compared to previous years. I did notice in the previous years that the exams required candidates to draw out a lot of diagrams, but since the exam changed format, it's not possible for people to draw any diagrams. I think that this is important to keep in mind that with the online format, they can't ask you to draw anything anymore. As I mentioned previously, in past exams, there was always a question where you had to draw a McCabe Thiel diagram, and there wasn't this year, which really surprised me. So for the online exam, you'll log into your laptop at home, and you'll have to have your laptop camera on the entire time, so the exam invigilator can see your face during the entire examination. Prior to the exam, the exam invigilator will ask you to point your laptop camera down onto the table um, and to spin the laptop camera around 360 so that they can make sure that you're not cheating. Well, I felt really good going into the exam and I did pass, but I didn't achieve the grade I was hoping for. I was hoping for at least a B, but I got a C to add to my collection. In 2022, I'll be taking my third and final module. I'm not looking forward to this one. I'm hoping to just pass and finally earn my diploma in distilling. I've been taking each module one year at a time because firstly, they're expensive. It costs 525 pounds to sit one exam. And also just because I want to properly focus on each module. However, I was talking to one of my subscribers recently and he told me he took all three modules in June 2021 and he passed all three of them with a C grade. So it is possible to just get it all done and over with in one year if you're really keen and you have the motivation to get it all done at once. If you've made it this far in the video, then thank you! I had a fellow exam taker, Mike Dennis, email me a document with his advice for taking the diploma in distilling. Mike sat module two and three of the diploma in distilling this year, and he was kind enough to create and share a document with his tips and advice and exam taking strategies for everyone to look at. So thank you, Mike. I'll put a link for that document in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video about my experience taking module two of the diploma in distilling. Please support the channel by leaving a comment below and giving this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel for more distilling, brewing, and drinks videos. This is Bluebird, sending good vibes your way. I'll see you next time.